Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our special uh, council meeting tonight for October 2nd, 2023, 5 p.m. here at the Shelter House. Good evening, administrators, council, and our audience members. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you'd call roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Sorry. Yes, here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Sorry. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwell. Here. <clears throat> members present. Excuse me. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's see. Uh, tonight's invocation will be done by Mr. Lindsay. Would you like to do it? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay will do our invocation. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this gorgeous weather. Father, we ask you to keep an eye on this council, on the city. Lead us and guide us to make the best decisions we can, Father. Father, we ask you to keep your hands on the fire department, EMTs, or EMS, police officers, and our military. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Apologize, Mr. Lindsay. For what, sir? For throwing that at the last minute. That's ah, okay. I forgot to ask before we started. started at the last minute. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, uh, action on the minutes none. Communications done. City Mayor's report none. Report. Committee reports. Uh, comments from members of the public. We have no members in the audience this evening. Resolution ordinance is none. Other city businesses here to discuss uh, two topics: the nature work, uh, the nature work grant for the pool liner, and then to the water rate and other charges. So we'll start off with pool liner and nature work grant. Mr. Bridge, good evening, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public watching on YouTube, and of course, members of administration. Um, so we called a special meeting tonight uh, to talk about two, two important issues. Uh, the first one on the agenda is the nature work grant that we got originally for the gazebos at the pool. But then council had looked at using that for a pool. Um, when we had that meeting, Mr. Kickler said there may be some additional other charges we need to look at. There are some additional other charges that we let council know about in the past few meetings, which spurred this meeting. So with the gist of what's going on is uh, we are thinking about putting a pool liner in, but we need council's additional guidance on that due to an increased cost of the project. Um, so without further ado, we will let Mr. Kiko go into detail about that. The pool is his department and he's done great research on this particular topic. Uh, just like the last, uh, that one council meeting where um, I reached out to another in, um, commercial builder and they come up with, uh, you know, if you're going to put this uh, liner in, here's some things you might want to uh, definitely do, you know, because they were saying there could potentially be a 10 year warranty. And that was uh, upgrading the pumping system. Uh, all the lines associated with it, and then that surge pit that sits off to the side of the pool boiler, uh, deepen that, and then repair the main uh, drain lines in the deep end, uh, doing all this work prior to the liner going in. Uh, there was no sense of putting a liner in without this type of work being done. Um, and so he got me back a ballpark estimate of a, about $175,000 uh, you know, to do that additional work. Um, you know, not counting separating the baby pool. I had mentioned I thought it was around maybe less than 10. It's actually 43,000 if we wanted to just take the baby pool and put it put it on its own system. Uh, but that is not required for the, the liner at this point. How much are we talking to fix the pool to put the liner in? Well, it'd be 175 plus the about 120,000 for the liner. So I think we have 175,000 plus the liner. Yes. So council, what you have in front of you too is you have two handouts. We have one that's stapled that has the budget on there. So another reason why we want council to really look at this project with a fine tooth comb is basically because of the impact that it's having under the general fund. So right now we have a total of 250 coming out of the uh, general fund to go to the pool fund to help with that liner. So we want to definitely pay attention to our ending fund balance on the um, on the general fund as 2022 actual 2.3 million. We are projected 1.6, um, and in 2024 we are projecting 847,000. But again, we want to highlight the transfers that are coming in. In addition to the 250 for the pool, we also have an additional 250 for the water project. 
uh, to get the lead removal out. That was that massive part of that grant. So um, when we look at the impact of the pool in this particular project has on the general fund, that should be of an area of concern with city council. And then we also have the pool balance in here as well. So with the 250 transfer, the pool is projected to be ending at 2,259 at the end of 24. How much was that major works grant again? Do you remember? Forty-five thousand, and that would that would have covered the cost of the gazebos. <clears throat> that could be hard pressed to spend almost three hundred thousand dollars on the on the pool at this point. <clears throat> One hundred seventy-five thousand dollars on top of the liner. That's a lot of money. And, and I guess this question would be for the city manager or Mr. Kiko. What would the life of the pool be if we did spend this? We're talking 10 years. That's a guarantee or the life of the liner. If the liner's installed, what would the life expectancy be? Yeah, if, if we spent all this money, how long would that pool last? I thought you said at one time the liner was only guaranteed for 10 years. It is guaranteed for manufacturing defects for 10 years. Okay. So somebody would jump in there and cut the liner would be, you know what? We can do those minor repairs, but you know, you got water, you got to take all the water out and fix it. But yes, I mean, that stuff we would still be uh, charged for. But if for some reason everything is fine and the liner itself decides to split, that would be no cost to us. If it wasn't caused by the underlayment, the concrete that it, that it adheres to, or the fabric, then that would not be a, a cost. So, so what I'm hearing, uh, and maybe council's hearing the same thing, I don't know. If we don't do these $175,000 repairs and something happens to that liner, the manufacturer is going to say, well, it's because you didn't do this. Is that so what you're saying? Not as much that. It's if you put the liner in, okay, there's other things that are underneath that liner that can go bad, mm -hmm. not necessarily damage the liner per se. But with the pit and our pumping, if for some reason they start changing, like we're, we're barely meeting, uh, we're just under minimums for pumping capacity. We do chlorinate like we're supposed to, we, we filter, we just don't do it enough and they, they pass us. So we put this liner in and things change and we don't have all the, the pumping done. Well, the pumping's not just above the liner, it's below the liner as well. Yeah, I know. So then we would have to have a liner in two years later, ODH, the Ohio Department of Health comes through and says, you know what, minimum uh, specs are now this, then we won't be able to make that change because we'll have a liner in there. It, 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 no, it, it, it a reduced But the cost. liner could be taken out once the pool's empty, correct? No, the liner's to stay. It's just like your liner at your home pool, you never empty it out because it will shrink up and it is done for. Now, I'm not saying we can't clean it, it, it can go empty for a little bit, but you don't drain this pool. Once the pool is full, we do not empty it because we have so much negative pressure because mm -hmm. of the water table. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we don't empty it. That's our biggest fear with the liner without any pumping changes or the surge tank or even the drain lines. It is the negative pressure of the water table that it pushes on the backside of the liner. That's where I was speaking before on the warranty. They won't warranty it if that is the cause of the damage to the liner. Personally, I'd be hard pressed to spend one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars on it. I only get ten years, and we're talking actually two hundred seventy-five thousand minimum. Because anybody has done any type of reconstruction or remodeling or anything, it always costs more because you find things that you're not aware of, didn't know about, something will break. Uh, so I figure I'm thinking in my head three hundred thousand dollars probably a better mark than the two seventy five, and I'd be really hard pressed to spend that much money on on a pool that we'd only get ten years service out of maybe. So I'm, I'm going to let somebody else talk and see what they think. Good, thank you. And Mr. Cook had his oh, hand okay. up. Go ahead. 
No, how you're saying that the warranty is for 10 years. What's the li actual life expectancy of this liner? <clears throat> there is, there's really, once it's out of warranty, I think, I, I don't know, it's not 20, it's not 30. The, a, the best liner you can get in residential, I think it's 12. That's top of the line. It'll be faded by then, um, but they don't give you a life expectancy on a commercial liner like that. It's not 30 years, it's not 40, it's not like it's a long-term um, fix. Or I don't want to say fix, that's the wrong word. It's not a long term as in if that was a brand new concrete on there, where then you know concrete's got a good 20, 30 years of structural life. And they also prorate those liners for home pools. If something goes wrong and you've had it five years, they only pay you seven years of the, of the 12 year warranty as, or whatever it came with. They don't pay you the whole amount. They don't replace the liner. So it still costs you blue coup bucks. I know. You good, Mr. Rogo? Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Cook. How are you? I know this is going to be a loaded question. What would the price be on a new pool if we were to put this out to the voters? Well, the, the we price that was brought to us in that study was, was uh, kind of high. Um, I want to say that was right around two and a half uh, to, uh, it could go up as high as five mil, depending on what you do on the outside. But in talking with this person, he would be able to make it a lot cheaper, but you're, you're probably, you're probably still close to a million, if not a little over. Close to a million? Yeah, close to a million or a little over. Now that's not a full redevelopment of the property. That's just the, that's just, that, that's just getting our pool and pumping uh, up. All right, if we had to do full bore, let's say we had to move that pool and go full bore somewhere else. Oh, you're good. Talking a million and a half? It is, it is loaded. A new site and excavation. You know, you got a couple hundred thousand probably in excavation and then making sure the ground's sound before you pour that, that uh, floor in. I can't put a number on. I mean, I know what it takes to cost and dig a basement. You're close to 80,000 on a basement. So. I mean, that's putting block walls up and digging a, a footer and stuff. So that's right around 80. So that's minimum of some excavation costs, I guess. I mean, and that's only, that's a small hole. To if replace that pool, I think, would be almost, somewhere between almost, five and 10 million. Oh, I think about two. You think about two, two and a half. Did you finish? Well, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe before we spend this kind of money, we should go back to the voters and ask them if they're willing to put a bond issue or some type of a monetary issue on in order to pay for this pool. I, I, I'm like Bill, I can't quite see putting this kind of money in that pool. If we're talking 10 years, that's uh, 300, or that's 34, 35,000 a year. And uh, that's plus whatever else we have to kick in. So I, I personally would much rather see us go go for some kind of an explanation from the citizens. Thank you, sir. Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Bridge, I had asked you a ways back about the cost of a levy. You said you had my information, but I never. You had asked me about the cost of a bond. Okay. Yep. So when I emailed you, said we're looking on a formula. So that formula was not correct. So I, Jake's working on some things for me, but that would be a general obligation bond, what that would be, and basically minus knowing how much it costs for the lawyers to get that bond ready to go and, and minus some other costs. All that is is an increase of property tax. So let's just say you want to take out $3 million in general obligation bonds, and that's included everything. There's uh, some way you figure it out because it's just based off the number of people that pay into your property tax and you divide it over 20 years or 30 years, you know? So let's just say that you have a $3 million bond over 20 years and you do the math backwards. We have X amount of rooftops to pay into property tax. You need to divide it that way. So the more houses you build, the cheaper it gets. But I don't want to speak on anything firm until I have my final discussion with Jake on it. But that's what I was going to signify, if you mind if I brought that up, because it was a conversation just between you and I. I uh, tend to agree with Mr. Cook. I think we're beating a dead horse here. Um, it's 60 years old. It's well past its useful life. 
I think it's time to look at something different. And if we can uh, float a levy or a bond to build it, I would say we go for that. Float? No pun intended? No. Yes, pun intended. <laughs> now, property on Madison, that's a higher elevation than where the pool is now, correct? Yes. So there'd be less of a problem with the water table? Yes, we didn't have water. I think we were almost 16 feet down where we started. You water table moves a little bit with the ground, but what the problem is with this site down here is you also have the creek bottom, mm -hmm. and that it rises there. Where typically your uh, water table aquifer does not move like that. So yes, Madison is more of a preferred um, area. Where when we dug out Madison Street School, we did not hit water until pulling the floor out of the basement, which was that's almost a uh, two and a half stories down. Okay. All right. That's something I think we should ponder. All right. Anyone else? I agree with Mr. Grimm and Mr. Pope. I hate to say it, but I mean, I think, I think citizens need the pool, but not at that expense. If we can figure out a way to build a room. Good. Bond, you have anything? No, I, I agree with the, all the comments. I mean, just looking at the numbers here, <coughs> I think it would, it would definitely put our general fund in a bad position uh, going that route. You know, it was different when we were talking a little over 100,000, we had 80,000 saved, but now when we're talking 300,000, it just changes the, the scope of it. So, um, yeah, at this point in time, I, I think it would just be wise not to spend that money on that particular thing, but maybe look at it, look at the possibility down the road of a, being able to pay for a pool or see if the, see if the citizens want it. Maybe they, you know, it's their money we're spending. So, I mean, yeah. in my opinion, what what they would like. Good. Huh? Just my handful of comments on it, um, and, I, and I agree, even though I, I don't want to see the pool ever close, I'd love to see another one. I think that's a great idea going towards, you know, if we could get a price, um, you know, ballpark price or whatever it costs to build something new that's not super, you know, not a Cadillac version of the pool, but something that's, you know, something more fitting for our, our city. Um, just, the, but on the pool in general, my feelings on it over the years is, is that I don't think the pool, and, and I agree, it's, it's lived its, its time. But I don't think it's ever had a fair shake um, as far as the upkeep and the maintenance. For example, you know, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Kitko, about the, uh, the, the filter rate. It needs to be turned over. The pool needs to be filtered X amount of times per, you know, the regulations and the, and the, uh, the health board and all that. Um, but this is nothing new. This has been a problem for as long as I'm aware of, five, six, seven years ago. So, I mean, things like that that kind of bother me is, is We've known that's a problem. To me, that falls into a similar situation with like our water tower or anything else that we need maintenance with. That should have been brought to us and said, hey, this is a problem. We're skating by with it. Let's start tucking away some money or come up with a plan just like we did with the water tower. Just like the water tower and, and you know, let's get this fixed so we can, we can fill the pool with the correct rate for, for regulations. And then I know that you, you guys have mentioned about the strain on the general fund. I, as, as far as the daily oper or annual operation of the pool, I don't think it's a strain. I mean, I know that you know some people will categorize the, the, the somewhat of a loss of the pool as, a, as an expense to the city. It's you know it's just the, pro the price of doing business. Um, but you know the, the general fund has continued to go to go up every year, regardless of the pool losing a little money or making a little bit of money. I know it's been small margins that it's made a few bucks here and there, but you know when it was losing eighty thousand dollars, and you know now it's usually you know much much lower. You know when we were talking about building this new shelter house with grant money, I, I mentioned the idea of putting it down there on the volleyball court in that area and making it part of the pool because then you could have used that as the part of the pool, or at least in my thinking, and that would have been a year-round generation of revenue for the pool. I mean, that idea was kind of shot down quick on your guys' side of the table. I mean, I'm not mocking it, just, it's just my observation. I was concerned about running a water line and things of that nature. So, um, 
But but at the end of the day, I mean, I agree. It's it's lived its life, and I, I I'm not going to vote to to put three hundred thousand dollars into it. But I would definitely <clears> like uh, whether it's this calendar or next year's council to, to look at um, you know looking at putting something back because with we have new homes coming to town. I think you know the, you know whether um, whether it's this pool or a new pool. They you know we need more things to do in this town for the community. I mean, we Dan and his team does great at the ballpark and you know some of the parks and things like that, but. It just would be nice to replace it with something that the, the citizens can use. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Question, sir. Uh, to council and to the administration, the uh, it has been mentioned before. Uh, we we had some conversation on it. what about a splash pad, and then there's no really expense to it. You don't need lifeguards. You don't have to man. <coughs> you know, people just goes and gets wet and and. I don't know what that would cost either. I mean, that would be an option for people with the kids, especially the kids. They, they like to play in the water. And I do believe it has to be filtered and maybe chlorine, I think. Um, uh, does it okay? Uh, so that's another option. And I think it would be cheaper than building a new pool, uh, a pool the size of the ones we have, like I stated earlier, would be somewhere between five and ten million dollars. The last time I had checked on a pool, uh, I, w I was going to put a pool in my backyard where I live now, and they told me it was going to be eighty thousand dollars, and I said not this lifetime. And it wasn't all that big of a pool, but it would have taken up my entire backyard. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm figuring if that pool was eighty thousand, and this was ten years ago. I can only imagine what the pool the size of the one we have to replace that with what we have, and it probably should even be a little bit bigger, is going to be between five and ten million, if not more. Just just my comments on, on the two splash pad versus a pool. Yeah. I don't know which would be cheaper or which it, citizens I think if would I remember, even be would even be interested in a splash pad. I think if I remember right, and just correct me, I think the, there is a cost to run a splash pad. You said because the water still has to be filtered, yeah. maintained, like around twenty five thousand dollars a year. I, I thought you said. I mean, but okay. that was it, a lot. It, yeah, it's just ke chemicals, and then typically a splash pad, the water is not. Uh, there are some that recirculate the water, but a lot of them don't. Okay. Because they're, one of them, they're on timers or activity. When people are there, they run. When they when there's no people there, they don't run. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but <clears throat> John we got in here for a pool. It was about three million. It's three to five. Yeah. For a brand new pool similar in size to what we already have. Okay. So. Yeah. But how long ago was that? I mean, mm, was it like this year? Yeah, it was, it was during when we were two COVID. Years, two uh, years doing ago, the, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like a year and a half ago. I mean. Yep. Okay. Well, if it was three, three and a half million there, I imagine you could add another mill to yeah. it by now because everything's gone up. But still, it's cheaper than what I thought. Yeah. You know, I was estimating five to ten mil, but it's, if we can get one for three and a half mil, four mil, four and a half mil, it's cheaper in my estimate what I thought it would be. Yeah, it might be something, but I think a splash pad would probably be <coughs> cheaper. Go ahead, Mr. Man. I can't see a splash pad drawing that many people. First of all, you won't be able to have a swim team yeah. practice in a splash pad. Uh, well, this is true. Um, it's not going to bring the people. For three and a half to five million, we can have a pool that's going to outlast everyone in this room. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I cannot see spending 300000 for something that we don't know how long it's going to last. Right. And, it, and could go out, it could go out in just a couple of days. Right. And if it's only five mil to put a, build a new pool, that's about the size we have, or maybe just a tad bigger, or maybe a different shape or something. You know, I would personally, by spending that kind of money, I would want citizens' input, put it out to, I don't know, something to see, get in feedback from them, a vote or something, if they'd even want us to spend that kind of money on a pool. And they would have to pony up some money to help pay for it. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Bridge, can you get updated information? The people that you got it from. I'm sorry. I didn't Can you get updated information on a new pool? 
people we got. Uh, if the council wishes that, yeah, we can definitely talk about that for sure. Well, before you make that motion, because what you referring to something, because you mentioned a little bit lower price, is that was you talking about going with a whole new contractor, or what were you referring to? Yeah, so typically um, when you go through an engineering firm, they'll design and then they'll go out for bid for the contractors to build. Um, so there is a fee associated with that a little bit. Um, this is a commercial builder, so they in-house engineer it, so there is some savings there. And then they try to uh, reduce wasted space. So for instance, our deep well, how much wasted space we got. They try to design the pool to make it more fitting. So what I've been told by both the engineering firm that did the study and this contractor is our pool is, I would, I would say way oversized, but it's too big. It's big. It, there's a lot of wasted space. So they would better utilize it so you can bring costs down there. But I do have some uh, obviously people in mind to you know, go through and do a full walk, say all new buildings, all new facility, and say here or here, you know, over at Madison, you know, that type of scenario. Would you need a, need a motion for that? If that's what council wants, yeah, because I've got a vision for pool in quotation marks. I was going to ask for explanation on that anyway. I would move that we ask Mr. Bridge to get some updated uh, estimates on a new swimming pool. A second. Would you like a vision board with that as well? What? Vision board, like to see what it's going to look like. I mean, I can we can do a, something very minimal, or we can do something that you're going to we're going to use to sell to the voters. And if we're going to do it, we might as well do it now. But we'll try to do the work twice. Vision, Vision. maybe on paper too. Okay. So motion. Well, let me So I'm motion done. by Mr. Vice Mayor, and second by Mr. Lindsay. Do you have any comment? How remind me again? How? How deep can we go with the current pool to get above the water table? Uh, right now it sits about eight, so we would probably get it up to that five foot level. <laughs> All the five foot stays uh, out of the water. I want to say it's a rate of about seven feet deep is where we start getting water on down the last five to six feet, depending on rainfall. And how deep do we have to have to have a, a diving board? Didn't you say it was 10 to 12 feet to have a diving board? Uh, you need minimum 12 uh, feet to have a one meter dive. But I think last time I checked, you need five feet to have a good uh, slide. Yeah, slides are a lot easier to, right. to fit. So you could replace, if, if it ever went through, you could replace a diving board with some really nice slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're within a couple inches of our slope. When you dive out the slope, we're right there, like on the edge of uh, so we to keep it. So, I mean, hypothetically, we can keep the pool where it's at, location wise, rebuild it. Uh, increase the deep end up to say six or seven feet, but in some nice slides instead of the diving boards, still give the citizens of this town a nice pool that's centrally located. It's not on Madison, where you know I think that land would be better utilized in the future. Um, and, then go from and I'm sure through this motion and through Mr. Bridge, I will be able to get a couple different options of with dive, without dive. Well, with right, right off the bat, I mean, sorry for especially location. It's nature work granted, so if you keep it there, that's one less place you have to go and acquire because that was going, that's always going to remain open for public yeah. space. Yes. So if we so go we, and rebuild we, somewhere we, else, we on Madison, we can't, you don't have to say a pool, but it has to be an open park space. Yeah. So now we're maintaining two different things. Anyone else? Please. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lynch. Yes. Pass the 7 0. Thank you very much, Ms. Berger. Before we adjourn, I got something. Before we adjourn, I, I got a comment. Or I go on to the next topic. Oh, okay. Before uh, the next topic, yeah. we're not done. Yeah, speaking of the pool, it's. We knew this day was coming. Uh, the past few years, we've done really good with keeping improvements on it, but council's worked well with administration and administration administration's worked well with you guys. I think that the right decision was made tonight, so we just want to thank you for that, and we will uh, definitely move forward for a bigger and better pool in the future. Thank you, what's coming? Sir. Uh, not a, so if going forward with this, what's the timetable for the grant? I don't want to lose the grant. I got to get back with her on that. Sorry to give her a heads up that council was debating uh, what they're going to do with that. So I'm going to get back with her first thing That's tomorrow ideal. and then go back to the original. Them. So we're going to, so we're on the same page. We're going to revert back to the original nature work grant with the gazebos. That's what we're going to revert to, right? Okay. This guy's slick over here. I tell you, I'm just, 
<laughs> He's wanting a new ballpark somewhere. No. Oh, you thought a pool? <laughs> I already got it on my to-do list. I'm already working on that too. So there's a lot going on. All right. <laughs> All right. So on to the next topic. That is water rate and other charges. So. Uh, really wanted to bring everyone together. So we were looking at the budget. We have looked at some ways that we can reallocate some money uh, to say, all right, maybe this year we can get away with not having a uh, rate increase. And when I say reallocated, every year when we budget, we have that cash out reserve that we have in wages. That way, if someone in the middle of the year goes and gets another job or goes somewhere else, we have to cash them out on vacation, sick time, et cetera. That could be a pretty costly cash out. So we kind of built that into our reserve. So we're gonna pull that out and use that for, uh, to cover the 30K that we need for revenue. So I do want to take this opportunity to look at some uh, other charges that we do have in a water discussion. That is your tap-in fees. Again, that is only for the new houses being built. So anyone right now is not gonna be impacted by these tap-in fees. We have a set of short-term goals and long-term goals with our water department. Our short-term goals is to get enough revenue in that it remains in the black. If you look at the history of your water department, for the past few years now, we're going to the last page of the staple document. It is actually aid into its reserves. That is a trend that we do not like to see. Any, any, a lot of our funds, most of them always end up in the black. We may budget for them to go into the uh, red a little bit, but how the year closes out, it always ends in the black. This is not the same for the water department. So we see it's actually eating in those reserves every year. So short-term goal is to not let it eat into those reserves much longer. We also have long-term goals, and that is a long-term goal is we should establish some policy, not only with this fund, but also for our general fund, that it has a minimum dollar amount in there as an ending balance. And that is for your, something happens, you need a year operating in there. You know, so that's something that can be a long-term goal. Our long-term goal with the water department has a lot of external factors that we need to take into account. The biggest external factor is these new houses that are, that are being going, they're going to be being built. If they don't go to the rate as that we're projecting or developers projecting, that's going to impact these water rates. As we can see by eating into the fund balance uh, with our stock we have now, we're not bringing in enough to cover it. This is a budget not full of fluff. We are very uh, strict with our expenses here. Um, so there's not a lot that we can cut. So we see that eating into the reserves everywhere. It tells us our current makeup is not really cutting it without that rate increases. Okay, so we're gonna get by with what we got. When you look at the tap in fees, we're going to have a massive bill uh, loan fall off in 26 and that's the water payment loan. I don't want any kind of false um, Hopes. hopes with that because once that falls off shortly after we're going to take on another loan for our wellfield development so that could be more that could be a little bit less but we're still going to have another large bill to start paying and that's going to be epa mandated to through the welfare development so long-term goal two is have enough to sustain that minimum operating balance and yet have enough to get the capital projects that we need to get so when we raise the tap-in fees, those strictly goes into our capital fund. So any money that we bring in from these tap-in fees are gonna go straight to capital improvements. That is your well-filled project, you know? So given the information that we have, we're trying to do this without raising rates too much. We have a 25 cent rate coming in in November for sewer. So that's gonna impact the bill. So we'll go start getting some questions about that. So if we're gonna impact and raise the water rates, they would saw a rate increase for the sewer side and water side as well. I think we can manipulate for this year, but years coming up, we're gonna to have to have that discussion about uh, the rates and how much it is and how much it's really doing uh, impacting the bottom line of the water department. So any other information on that, we'll definitely hand off to Mr. Kiko. Uh, we also have uh, Finance Director, Ms. Harris here. Should Council have any in-depth questions? <clears throat> So basically, with the well field, obviously, we, we've been, um, you know, we're looking to try and put back for aging infrastructure is one part of it. Two, um, in this 24, I did get a, well, a couple different grants. One was to the old high service pump building that used to be part of the building that Dr. David bought. We kept the high service pump building. Uh, the, one of the projects coming up here in 24 is we're going to uh, get that upgraded. So then our plant, which every, it, was, it was built in 2006. Everybody, you know, it's new. Well, it's not new anymore. Um, so, but we do a great job at maintaining that plant because we don't want it to age and, and, and go by the wayside with everything, with other stuff. So the old high service now will be the same level of type of uh, equipment that the current plant has. So that'll really help us 
have pretty much the, the main buildings and pumping in a, in a newer, uh, uh, with newer pumps and, and in the way they operate. And then, of course, lead abatement. That's, that's the huge thing where, you know, that $250,000 is just engineering to get all the lead out of the old section. We're hoping for 100%, um, but we're trying to get as much as uh, we can with it. And just so you know what this means is, basically it's water mains through the old section and then uh, lead service up and including the galvanized pipe in the house. So yes, we will be going in and um, trying to get additional funds to maybe help cover some more, but uh, the EPA is requiring you that anything, even though we only have a lead gooseneck, we don't have lead lines to go in, we have lead goosenecks and that considers the whole line lead. So um, we don't have any issues with it in our water, but we gotta get rid of it. So we never never have issues. So then to help cover some of that capital cost, uh, it went around and it's been since 2013 since we've adjusted our tap fees. Tap fees include a permit, $25. Your capacity part, which is your charge to stay a residential property with a three-quarter inch line on there. You don't hit the system hard, um, so you have a current $1,150 tap charge. So someone comes to Twin Creeks, if someone comes up here currently, uh, they'll pay $25 plus the $1,150 capacity charge and then the cost of the meter. We just charge the going rate for the meter at the time Neptune gives us the cost. Well, after doing some uh, looking around and, and a lot of other places haven't adjusted their tap fees in a while, um, you can see where I wrote down, uh, sorry about that, it was supposed to be copies, but I got here and they weren't done. Uh, so for instance, uh, the three quarter inch go from 1150 to 1400. Right. So all that, those funds right there in, uh, would be additional for the new, house, the new properties that come in. And we would build up to a three inch. We only have, I believe it's two three inch services in the city currently. One is a, the apartment, apartments behind the swimming pool, and I believe Van Crest is on a three inch. No one else is. We do not have a, we have one uh, <coughs> six, and that's New Carlisle Elementary. So we don't have a lot in that size. Um, but what I did is four inch, six inch, and eight inch, uh, we would write in the, in the proposed ordinance to have that done by a city engineer or designee to determine that capacity charge. So for instance, you're bringing in a brewery that needs a six inch line, he will determine that that hole that it will have on the water plant and quote it appropriately. Because if I was just to put 20,000 down there, it could be every bit of 100,000 is what it's worth for them to have that, uh, put that strain on the water plant. So that's what you see there with the tap fee. So the total tap fee is your permit plus this connection charge plus the meter that goes in. And the meters are quoted, you know, whatever the price is Neptune sells them to us for. Mr. Um, three quarters is your typical residential home, correct? Yes, that's what we have 99% of. <clears throat> okay. I just want to make sure. Yep. <laughs> the math on that, should council agree to raise your, their tap and fees to 1400 a 360 rooftop development will bring in 504000 for capital improvements. Now, and also understand these tap fees with the new homes, that's all built into the cost of the actual home itself. It's not... Like when, when the developer sells the house, that that tap fee is built into their cost. It is, but it, the homeowner will pay it. Yeah, I know, but. So it does, but yeah, gotcha. But we'll still receive the money. Yes. Yeah, okay. I thought you were indicating that we wouldn't get it. No, 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 no. I'm so saying no, 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 no. And then other than the newer developments that are coming or any new built buildings, I mean, we don't see a lot of this, right? I mean, because I mean, it's only on a new build, right? <clears throat> it's only on new builds. Okay. Else? Prior to Twin Creeks, maybe one or two a year. Then Twin okay. Creeks took off, and then we, we have a little bit more. But with these on the park, <coughs> that's a good amount of money. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bond. How does this compare to other municipalities around here? So uh, Clark County Utilities, uh, this brings us up right to about where they're at now. Um, this puts us a, a hair over Huber. And um, we're close to Springfield. Actually, I was floored by Springfield's prices, but theirs do go up higher on their later ones. Um, but we're just probably a little more than Springfield, a little less than Clark County, and then right around Huber Heights. Those are the closest water utilities. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lindsay. 
If somebody had a uh, line break, would they have to pay another tap-in fee to replace that line? Have a what? If somebody had a water line break. No, 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 no. It, this that, is a one time. That's just when they, on a new build and they yep. first get the water line meter and that stuff. Yep. The only question I have, I know it's in line with the other places, but the two and three inch line seems like they at least doubled and then the three inch tripled. Yeah, I, I believe, yeah, I believe those are probably even more delayed because if we have a three inch line uh, hook onto our system, it will put, let's call it more of a herd on the system than an, uh, a residential home. So that'd be more like a business somewhere. Y yeah. Um, business school. I'm even trying to think two inch. A car wash is a two inch. Um, they're, they're, they're your bigger places. Um, even your... Um, Fast food restaurants, mm -hmm. typically even three quarter. They may even maybe a one inch, but they're they don't they don't. I mean, you can get thirty gallon a minute out of a plus out of a one inch. The, the do we have any one inch lines in the city mm -hmm. to residentials? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not many. They're, like they're, they're more your doubles. I'm sorry, they're more your doubles. doubles? Okay, yeah. I'm just curious. Or if someone nowadays requests it because. They put a fancy bathroom in that requires that flow, then they'll do something like that. But typically, three quarter for residential, doubles are one inch. And then uh, we do have another chart that kind of requires your minimum line size to what you're building. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Vice Mayor. These new developments, the developers put in the water lines, correct? They put in the trunks, yes. And we inspect those? Yes. They're all going to be three quarter inch. No, 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 no. So a developer will pay for all the main lines, the eight inch mains in the in the road or so, or the twelve inch coming from the tower. That is wholly, completely separate. He's paying for that, and then we accept it at the end. These are to tie off of that eight inch in the road to go to the house. Okay. Okay. I got a follow up question up to Mr. Graham, sir. I'm done. The uh, are you done, sir? Mm -hmm. You said that the developer pays for the 12 inch line coming from the tower and then down to the eight inch line and then we. It's, we we take we those over as our. Uh, and then we accept the lines and then we have to pay him for them? No, 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 no. They pay for the development uh, to go in and then we accept the infrastructure then as city owned. Okay, all right. And then the homeowners basically pays for all of that through the purchase of the home. Right. In various ways, all this yeah. how this whole TIF thing works, right. and that'd be more Mr. Bridges' alley for the for the rest of the infrastructure development. All right, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Anything else this evening, Mr. Bridge? Uh, not for this. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, draft an ordinance, and you guys can vote on it either way you see fit. Great. Thank okay. you very much. Yep. Council, any other business? Not on this one. Not right. this. We did adjourn it. Yeah, no, yeah. Actually, yeah. Well, so you would, you know, you'd come in late, sir. So we'd pass the public comment section. Did you? Sorry, <coughs> sir. You might want to look. I think you got money or something here. Fall out of your pocket. Oh, it's not going there. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so I didn't know if you were sticking around for the next meeting. It starts at six, which is a normal council meeting. <laughs> you had something like, you know, I don't mind if you had something. I, I just simply had questions. About Okay, could you, for uh, our normal procedure, to go to the podium, would you need your name and address for the record, and then you can ask whatever you like. <clears throat> Isn't that the end of the next meeting? Isn't that the end of the next meeting? There's still public comments here. You just but it has to be pertaining to what's on the agenda. It has to be pertaining to the to so special it has meeting. To be, yeah, it has to be pertaining to what's on the agenda. So yeah, that should wait till the next meeting. Oh, that's oh, the, it's it depends on what he's asking. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. It depends on what he's asking about his bill. Yeah, okay, can you wait till the six o'clock meeting? Well, no, it, what, what is he asking? If he's asking why his bill so much, then that's a rate issue. If he's asking okay. why his bill laid okay. out the way it is, then that's a different meeting. Okay, that, so yeah. name Why well, was it you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, I don't want to. Are you concerned about the, the cost of your bill, how much it is, or are you concerned about like, how it's laid out? How no, I'm concerned about the inconsistencies okay. that okay. my water bill has, that is a great thing. has you're had. So you're good. You're good. Okay, that is so great. for the record, name and address, please. My name is Jim Gage. I live at 208 Deerfield here in New Carlisle. Okay, then your question. Thank you. My question is, is there any other explanation than a runny toilet, a leak that isn't there that is causing these infrequent rises in my bill? They're usually 55 to 60. Last month it was 135. This is not a 
one-time thing, and yet my water usage is consistent day to day. There's no pool to fill up. There's not a hot tub. There's not a huge garden. Um, I mean, it's a hundred. It's a thousand percent increase that I can't justify. Mm -hmm. Is there an explanation for that? How many how many gallons are you using every month? I can't tell you. I can. I pay the invoice. I don't look at the bill, but I, I do know that my water my water usage is consistent. Sure. Does it usually go like X amount of dollars one month? Shoot up. Correct. 50, 53, 50, 53, 135, 50, 53, okay. and it goes back down. So you'll get the spike, and then it'll go right back down. Yes, for two or three months, and then you know, then it's 150. It's just the inconsistency of it, you know. Sure. I get up a little later. I have to pee at night, but my my electric bill isn't going up. Yeah. Well, I'll let the lights on. Yeah, I'll let Mr. Cook go into detail if you need past this. What I think is going on, and I could be wrong, are, is it something to do with how we're billing? We we you guesstimate and then we do an actual, but we only bill on so many thousand gallon increments. So let's just say like one month you use under a thousand, you can bill five dollars. Next month you use fifteen hundred, but you're still not under that two thousand increment, so it's a thousand increments, then your bill is gonna be something. And once you hit that two thousand, then we'll update your bill and it'll be a little bit higher. But I'll let Mr. Kitko go into a little bit more detail about that and then you have any other questions. But that's what it sounds like to me, given the fact that you are consistent with your down, with your usage. So there's there's no one <clears throat> explanation that anybody can give to everybody all at once to say this is the cause. What we typically do, if someone's got a, a, a bill that they normally run uh, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, that could be 3,900, 3,500, and so forth. And then maybe every once in a while you'll hit that, that, that last thousand that you weren't billed for early, like Mr. Bridge was saying, and then you use another three, so it could be four or five, because you're, you, you, you were close to that thousand. Now, let's say you jumped uh, 2,000, maybe 3,000 more. The only way to give you an explanation is what we do, um, we have a system up here that reads the meters um, every hour, but the meters read like constant, set by the seconds. And then what we'll do also is, before it even gets to the system, we have a device that we can go straight out to the meter and read it, it holds the last 90 days. And, and it'll do a graph like I'm sure everybody has seen online. That specifically tells you what you've used down to the hour. So if at two in the morning you had zero, three in the morning zero, and all of a sudden you had 1.5 at four, 1.5, what could 1.5 be? And that's where we don't know what it is, but we can kind of take a guess after all the experience we got. Most toilets, they're one and a half gallon flush. So we'll know that. And then um, other things we'll look at is if during a time frame it's zero, 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 all of a sudden we see it going 30, 40, and then it's hovering between 140 and 160 for an hour, and it keeps going, it keeps going, all of a sudden it shuts down. That is a toilet flapper, usually. And a fla flapper hanging up, chain under the flapper, the valve not shutting it, going down to two. Sure. I, 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 and it happens intermittently. Um, out of uh, about 2,300 accounts, I can almost guarantee you there's probably a minimum 100 toilets right now leaking. Um, now sometimes we'll catch a toilet and someone will hire someone or you'll go in there and hear it, but it is not always that way. Um, we had a new toilet never even used in a house, brand new, no one's even moved into it, and it had a leak coming out of the package. And they argued that we didn't have a leak. Well, finally we used dye into the tank and found that it was leaking out into the bowl. So that's one thing you can check. But if you'd like, um, I can do a data log. We can call you and just say, here are specifics. I mean, it, it's to the hour of what you used. Of the last 90 days. For, for, yeah, for the last 90 days. I would love that. Yeah. And, it, and it can, you can look and say, hey, what, what was jumping up on during this week? I had a lot of high usage. You know, um, and we can try to diagnose, but we, since we're not there, we just go by the many years. Um, I've been doing this since 2005, trying to read people's bills, read the data logs, read the, um, the consumption. And it's almost like I could find out more about people than I really want to know, you know, throughout how their water usage is. Um, after the meeting, oh, did he give his address? We got it. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'll take your address and we'll do a data log tomorrow morning. And then um, maybe after the meeting, I'll get your phone number so we can call you. 
and then it'll be to you, you know, what, what your usage is, how it's being used, and see what if you think, you know, something just don't seem right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, at the same time, I mean, he's covered it well. Um, and something else you could do, I don't, are you familiar with where and what your water meter looks like in the house? Yes, I know where so it's you know at, how yes. If you lift the lid, you shine a light, it'll come on? Yeah. When does our cycle start? I don't know if that's something you can pin. When does this billing cycle, like when does this cycle So, start? So our bills usually got to go out on the 15th. It could be the day later, depending on weekends. Um, so your bill, so you get that read, let's say on the 15th. And then the next reading will happen about the 14th or 15th. It's about 30 days. 31 days. So we go mid-month to mid-month is what your bill is for. This data log will be straight through. It, does, it doesn't look at billing. It just looks at water use. At my, at my location. At, my at your location and the only one to, to, to the... What kind of system is this? That's oh, we're, we're one of the smaller towns that actually have a full fixed base. Your meter reads to a collector straight to our computer all day. Impressive. And, and that's what I was going to tell you. You could kind of do a little bit of it on your own. What he's going to give you is really, I mean, it's really interesting to see. My daughter's in the audience tonight, and that girl, you should see it when I pull it on her. The shower, <laughs> the shower is like this long, no offense. But, um, Sorry, Chuck. But also, you can you know, go back there, and even if it's not on the exact cycle time, you could still yep. tell on your own, write down the date on, you know, what, October 1st at 5 p.m., then go back on in exactly 30 days, check it again, calculate your, and, and, and start to build your own little file to see if it's adding up to what we're sending you. That may not be exact depending on when the, the read is pulled from the computers, but it'll still give you a good idea. Um, if you ever see the little spigot, we have a handout up at the city building that tells you all the indicators, it's all digital readout. It'll give the indicators, it'll tell you it's a slow leak. Something's been, something's been going on. The water meters mm -hmm. of the yeah it, on the on, yeah when know. you put the light on it it can it'll show you a digital readout and if there's any craziness going on with it you might see the old fashioned little spigot icon will be on there or it'll be flashing or you'll see an arrow like so if you want to see and you're like um, no water's running in your house you'll just see a digital readout and then you go turn on your sink faucet and go back to the meter and all of a sudden you'll see it doing something. It'll tell you that it's moving flow at a gallon per minute. I need to relook at my water meter because it looked like it was just three numbers. Yep. Yeah, yeah, all, all these. It, it can't, it'll be zero, 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 three, something, something. We can, they, those meters can read up to a million gallons. We just read by the thousand, so it's in 1,000, then 2,000. So it takes a while to get, fill out every character. Yeah, so it's like an old calculator. Just hold a light on a steady for a couple of 30 seconds and it should pop up and start counting. Or not counting if nothing's running. So, But if it's counting and nothing's running, then you know you have. Right. So, And then, Howie, correct me if I'm wrong, we bill by the thousands, right? Yeah, we bill by the thousands. So if you're at 3,400, you're only getting billed for three. And then the next month, they're going to catch up that extra 400 plus whatever you used. So if you... Yeah, that actually makes sense. Um, I was not aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was just the actual usage per period. Um, but if there's a, a back delay that is being added on every two, three months, I, I, I can get that. Um, yeah, and each water sewer bill combo is $18.96. That's a thousand. So if you go to two, you multiply it by two. Go to three, you multiply it by three. So, you know, we got to charge it basically uh, 15,000 gallons is 284. 15,000. And uh, just know that uh, you can check your toilets uh, weekly with dye um, because that'll help you catch intermittent. If you check it once a month, it's a lot of times it's hard to do that. Um, but you can use a lot of water through a, through a toilet. Um, I always tell people if you flush it, and you let it refill, it fills within about 30 seconds. Flush it again, that's another gallon and a half. So in one minute, you've used three gallons. Well, if that toilet did hang open for a whole day of 1,440 minutes times three, sure. you can use 4,000 gallons in, in one day just from that little device. Nope. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I think that's it. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwell. Yeah, we're having another meeting, FYI, starting at 6 o'clock, so you didn't miss anything. <laughs> Sorry. This was a special meeting. How are you going to get it? Okay. Second, was Rodon? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodon? Yes.
Motion to adjourn accepted 7-0.